the rubrospinal tract, the reticulospinal tract, then anterior motor neuron, motor nerve, uh, tactospinal, reticulospinal tracts, vestibulospinal and reticulospinal tracts. So we should be knowing about these motor tracts uh, very much. Now the pattern of movement elicited by the spinal cord. The stretch reflex is functional at all times. Damp any oscillations of the motor movements initiated from the brain. When a brain signal excites a muscle, it is unnecessary to transmit an inverse signal to relax the antagonist muscle at the same time. This is achieved by the reciprocal innovation circuit that is always present in the cord for coordinating the function of antagonistic pairs of muscles. Other uh, cord reflex such as withdrawal, reflex, stepping, walking, scratching, postural mechanisms, they can each be activated by command signals from the brain. Now, what we should be knowing about when we are talking about the motor system, we should be knowing that if there is any sort of, any sort of pathology, any disease or lesions in the motor cortex, corticospinal pathway, the stroke, hemiplegia, what will happen? Now, the motor uh, control system can be damaged by a common abnormality that is the stroke. Uh, the common causes, they, they are like there is a rupture of a blood vessel leading to hemorrhage over there into the brain. There can be thrombosis of one of the major arteries supplying the brain. There is loss of blood supply to the cortex or to the corticospinal tract where it passes through the internal capsule. Uh, then what will happen if there is a removal of primary motor cortex which is area pyramidalis also removal of primary motor cortex the area which is containing the giant bets pyramidal cells varying degrees of paralysis of the represented muscles they are being seen if the sublying caudate nucleus and adjacent premotor and supplementary motor areas are not damaged, gross postural and limb fixation movements they can still occur, but there is loss of voluntary uh, control of discrete movements of the distal segments of limbs, especially hands and fingers, they are there. The ability to control the fine movements is gone. Area pyramidalis or the primary motor cortex is very much essential for voluntary initiation of finely controlled movements, especially of hands and uh, fingers. Muscle spasticity caused by lesions that damage large areas adjacent to motor cortex. The primary uh, motor cortex leads to a continued tonic stimulatory effect on the motor neurons of spinal cord. So if there is removal, there is hypotonia. Most lesions of the motor cortex, especially caused by stroke, they involve the primary motor cortex, also the adjacent part of the brain, the basal ganglia. In these instances, Muscle spasm almost invariably occurs in the afflicted muscle areas on the opposite side of the body because the motor pathway across to the opposite side. This spasm results mainly from damage to accessory pathways from the non-pyramidal portions of the motor cortex. These pathways normally inhibit the vestibular and reticular brainstem motor nuclei. When these nuclei cease their state of inhibition, that is, are disinhibited, they become spontaneously active and they can lead to excessive spastic tone 
in the involved muscles. This is the spasticity that normally accompanies a stroke in a human being. Now let's talk about the role of brainstem in controlling the motor function. Brainstem is composed of medulla oblongata, pons, and mesencephalon. The brainstem serves as a way station for command signals from higher neural centers. Now, what are the functions of brainstem? We should be knowing them that the brainstem is controlling respiration. It is controlling the cardiovascular system having the partial control of gastrointestinal tract, having control of different stereotype movements of the body, there is control of equilibrium, there is control of, uh, control of eye movements. The brain stems consist of two nuclei, which are controlling the whole body movement as well as the equilibrium. These are reticular nuclei and vestibular nuclei. So it is your logbook homework to draw and label the nuclei in brain stem. There is presence of excitatory inhibitory antagonism between pontine and medullary reticular nuclei. The reticular nuclei are divided into two major groups. They are the pontine reticular nuclei, they are the medullary reticular nuclei. The first one, the pontine reticular nuclei, they are located slightly posteriorly and laterally in the pons and extending into the mesencephalon. Then the medullary reticular nuclei, they extend through the entire medulla. They are lying ventrally and medially near the midline. The two sets of nuclei, they function antagonistically to one another, that is, the pontine ones, they are exciting the anti-gravity muscles, whereas the medullary ones, they are relaxing the same muscles. The pontine reticular system, these nuclei, they transmit excitatory signals downward into the cord through the pontine reticulospinal tract in the anterior column of the cord. They terminate on the medial anterior motor neurons. They excite the axial muscles of the body, which support the body against gravity. That is, the muscles of the vertebral column and the extensor muscles of the limbs. The pontine reticular nuclei, they have a high degree of natural excitability. They receive strong excitatory signals from the vestibular nuclei and from the deep nuclei of the cerebellum. So, when the pontine reticular excitatory system is unopposed by the medullary reticular system, it causes powerful excitation of anti-gravity muscles throughout the body. You can see. Then the medullary reticular system. The medullary reticular nuclei, they transmit inhibitory signals to the same anti-gravity anterior motor neurons by way of a different tract. The medullary reticular spinal tract is located in the lateral column of the cord. The medullary reticular nuclei, they receive strong input collaterals from the corticospinal tract, the rubrospinal tract, and other motor pathways. 
These normally activate the medullary reticular inhibitory system to counterbalance the excitatory signals from the pontine reticular system. Under normal conditions, the body muscles are not abnormally tense. The excitatory and inhibitory reticular nuclei, they constitute a controllable system that is manipulated by motor signals from the cerebral cortex. Now the role of vestibular nuclei to excite the anti-gravity muscles. Its function is associated with the pontine reticular nuclei to control the anti-gravity muscles. The vestibular nuclei, they transmit strong excitatory signals to the anti-gravity muscles, that is, the lateral and medial vestibulospinal tracts in the anterior columns of the spinal cord. Without the support of the vestibular nuclei, the pontine reticular system would lose much of its excitation of the axial anti-gravity muscles. The specific role of the vestibular nuclei is to selectively control the excitatory signals to the different anti-gravity muscles to maintain equilibrium in response to signals from the vestibular apparatus. The decerebrate animals develop spastic rigidity. When the brainstem of an animal is sectioned below the mid-level of the mesencaphalon, but the pontine medullary reticular systems as well as the vestibular system, they are left intact. The animal develops decerebrate rigidity. So what is this term decerebrate rigidity? This rigidity does not occur in all muscles of the body, but in the anti-gravity muscles, the muscles of the neck and trunk, and the extensors of the legs. You can see. Now the cause of decerebrate rigidity is blockage of normally strong input to the medullary reticular nuclei from the cerebral cortex the red nuclei and the basal ganglia. So due to lack of this input, the medullary reticular inhibitory system becomes non-functional and there is full overactivity of the pontine excitatory system and rigidity develops. So this is all about today's lecture. So all of you are uh, desired to make the uh, mentioned diagrams in your logbooks as well as learn the different terms, the decerebrate rigidity, the functions of brainstem, what is, what is stroke, what is dynamic, static neuron concept, what is the function of different neuron columns, what are the different layers of cerebral cortex. So thank you very much and stay blessed. Allah Hafiz.